Um, this is a mountain in central Anatolia. So it's in Eastern, Eastern Turkey. Um, and uh, you can actually, it's a pass, a mountain pass. And if I, you see my pointer here, that whitish line there is actually the, the road that goes over the pass between the high point um, in the distance there and the point where I'm standing. Um, and um, it's a mountain that sits on top of a plateau. So the mountain pass is about 2,500 meters, uh, but the ground level where you start from is, is already 2,000 meters. Um, so as we come up through the, uh, th th uh, at the beginning of the pass, uh, we have um, an, sort of a stony area. You can see that there's not much vegetation um, because it's dry in the summer. Uh, the, in the springtime, this is now, um, I think was the 17th of May, I took this photograph or, or thereabouts. Yeah, so it's, uh, it, it's a sort of a stony area and you can actually see these little brown things here are fritillaries mm -hmm. um, and the blue things are a species, I think that's a Bellevalia. Um, and the, the, the species here is Fritillaria pinardii. It's a little brown job. Um, it has sort of tubular flowers. Uh, but the inside is a sort of an orangey color. Uh, it has about four leaves, uh, a single leaf at the top there, which is a, one of the characters that we use to distinguish the fritillaries. Um, we'll see another one uh, very similar to this uh, higher up the mountain. So this is Fritillaria pinardii, um, and it grows here with uh, a, a lovely uh, Pascla, Pulsatilla albina, and um, an Ithionomus species, which I can't remember the name of, I'm afraid. Uh, so that's a sort of a grassy area that uh, is, is fairly low down on the pass. Um, but as you climb up higher, the, the whole area gets barer and barer, and you have these magnificent screes um, up on the uh, east side of the pass. Uh, the mountain is mainly limestone, and there's, there's all this shattered limestone is sort of falling down the hill um, in uh, various uh, size uh, stones from big boulders down to really gritty sand. Um, and um, it's, it's worth going up and having a look at those screes because uh, <clears throat> as, as you cross the screes, you become conscious of the foul, cross the, the, the route to the screes, you become conscious of the fact that there's more snow around, there's snow patches, um, there's more pulsatillas there, there's a draba, um, that's brunifolia. Um, and uh, up on the screes here, this is, you'll have to forgive the, the group of people. We took a botanical tour there uh, a few years back, I think uh, 10, 12 years ago. Um, and uh, it's one of these screes that, as you can see from the, uh, from the thing there, it's where you take, it's so steep and so loose that you take two steps up and you slide back. Um, so it's very difficult to get a foothold uh, enough to get a photograph of what's growing on the scree there. Uh, you can see, lots of snow around which is producing water going down through underneath the stones uh, and feeding the roots of whatever's growing there. What is growing there is a, is a Fritillaria crassifolia, subspecies crassifolia. It's a little tiny one. It's only about um, three or four uh, inches, sorry, uh, what's that? That's ten, ten, let's say 10 centimeters or 10, 12 centimeters tall. Uh, very glaucous or gray green foliage. Um, it's about the only thing that's growing on the scree there, and it's growing in these loose stones. Um, it varies by the amount of uh, brown on it, but it's mainly a green color uh, with uh, particularly brown on the uh, inner uh, segments, uh, just of the, of the six, three are inner, three are outer, green on the outer, br uh, brown and uh, somewhat checkered or tessellated on the inner ones. And, it's the only place you ever find it is growing on these very, very steep screes. Um, it's, it's very widespread in Turkey, but it is absolutely obligate that it grows on steep screes. Um, and wherever you find steep screes, whether it be in the southwest of Turkey uh, or uh, right across uh, central Turkey and right up into the far northeast of Turkey, uh, in suitable habitat, you will often find Fritillaria crassifolia, subspecies crassifolia. So we have a sort of a, a, a stony grassland species, Pinardii, and uh, one that grows on these, uh, these steep screes. Uh, here it is again, uh, just, in, just a few close-ups there, of just showing uh, the uh, 
how, how tiny it really is. It really is, uh, you know, uh, uh, just less than 10 centimeters in some of those. Of course, you can imagine you can imagine the amount of light that is reflected off these stones. So it it, it has plenty of sunlight. Mm. There seems to be so little around. I was wondering what is pollinating these plants. Uh, well, there um, it's a square bell. Um, the nectary um, is uh, in the sort of a bumpy bit that you can see on the angle of the bell on the shoulder of the bell. Um, and it's a square bell which enables quite big insects to get up inside. So it's probably bumblebee or wasp pollinated. Um, and uh, most fritillaries have a rather sort of um, fetid smell. Um, it's uh, very difficult to describe, um, but it is very attractive to wasps. So uh, often they're pollinated by wasps. And even at this time of the year, which is still very early and very cold up here, um, it, it, at night time, uh, there are solitary wasps around. Okay. Yeah, it seems so so uh, devoid of like trees, or there's no there's not much vegetation up there. So I was wondering if insects are actually like inhabiting this area. There's oh plenty of insects, plenty of wildlife up there. But you say uh, the only trees that you find are down in the valleys. Um, this is a very typical sort of, a, this, this uh, photograph here, very typical of the sorts of uh, uplands that you see uh, in uh, eastern Turkey and central Anatolia. Uh, very few trees at all. Uh, sometimes there are planted trees around the villages, but that's all. Um, and uh, most of the animals just have to live underground. Um, and uh, or in sort of, uh, this is sort of a few little sort of scrubby things around. You can see uh, maybe um, beyond the, the, you see the big truck down mm -hmm. uh, down here at just uh, just to the slight right of center in the middle of the picture um uh, behind that there's probably a bit of scrub in that valley there but that's but that's it it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, but there are plenty of flowers up there it's an alpine type habitat uh, so there's, there's plenty of things to pollinate and plenty of things to eat uh, I've actually climbed up above the tree. You can see my colleagues down down there in the uh, our, uh, our group down there in the still photographing on the screes. And I've climbed up to have a shot across the pass. You can see the road coming up. It's a good asphalt road um, uh, to look across where we're going next. We're going across on the other side of the pass to uh, an area of rock detritus, but it's not limestone. I don't know what rock it is. Um, and uh, you can see uh, that it's very, very stony. There's a lot of snow around, and you can see um, a tree here. And the, the green over the top there is that's a juniper, but it's completely dwarfed by the conditions. Uh, this is 2,450 meters, um, the highest point around. It's uh, very, very windy, very, very cold in the winter, and searingly hot in the summertime when the sun is up, um, because there's just no shade up here at all and it gets very dry. But I'm gonna draw your attention to the little pink things there uh, because that is another species of fritillary. And that's Fritillaria albariana, named after uh, an Englishman, uh, Sidney Albury, who uh, came from Birmingham. Um, and he uh, was the first discoverer of this, uh, of this plant or, or first finder uh, on, a, on, a, uh, on a, a, one, of, one of his tours. Uh, way back, I think, in the 1960s. Um, so uh, this is a, 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 it's a beautiful pink one. It has a slightly, it's a bell shape, but it's more, it's broad bell shape, but it's, it's more flared. Um, so an open flower, it's probably pollinated again by wasps or bees. Um, and again, it's very short and it's growing, uh, although it's growing in this sort of, uh, this rock detritus, it, the, the ground is very wet underneath from, from snow melt. So it has a lot of water when it comes up. So it has a really cold winter with a lot of snow on the top. Um, and then as the snow melts, it produces a lot of water into the ground that stimulates the plant to grow uh, and up it comes. And uh, this grows much better in Sweden than it does here in the south of the UK uh, because we don't have the winters to go with it. And the only way we can grow this well is to put the pots in the fridge. So these pots go in the fridge in the winter time. <laughs> with us in Gothenburg, where they grow this very, very well indeed, um, mm. uh, that they, they, they don't have to do that because they they live in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, so that's Fritillaria olbriana, which, which is a striking species to find. It's absolutely wonderful to see. You can see very little vegetation competing with it. <coughs> that's what it looks inside. You can see the little nectaries here, uh, which is what the pollinators will be after, uh, the, the, the nectar from there. Uh, and in the process of doing that, they're con uh, conveying the pollen uh, between plants. Uh, and onto the style there. Growing nearby, uh, there's another of the little brown ones with these more tubular flowers and slightly flared outside. Um, and I'll come back to that one in just a moment. Uh, this is Fritillaria armina. Um, the difference between that and Fritillaria uh, pinardii is that this one is deep brown inside, so it's the same color outside as it is inside. Um, and uh, it has sort of rather sometimes grayish green, sometimes bright green leaves growing in quite wet habitat, just like the Fritillaria olbriana. Um, and this is widespread. It's, uh, it produces a lot of uh, small bulbs vegetatively. So it, it goes all over the place. It gets disturbed, I guess, by animals digging and stuff like that, maybe rodents. Um, so you get quite big colonies of this uh, up on the uh, up, up on this mountain. Um, and here it is uh, again, growing in quite a wet habitat. And a lot of these leaves are actually uh, small plants of the uh, of the Fritillaria. Um, but on looking around, you come to the conclusion that there are some, oh, you, come, you, you come to the observation that there are some uh, odd-looking ones around which seem to be intermediate. And these are actually hybrids. So they're actually, the bees don't distinguish between, uh, or the wasps don't distinguish between Fritillaria olbriana and Fritillaria armina. They, they transfer the pollen and you get some, fert some fertilization and some hybrids. So you have these ones that seem to be intermediate between the two. Um, and uh, I, I, I picked a few flowers. This is uh, to the top, top left hand here is the, is the pink of a typical uh, Fritillaria uh, olbriana. And in the bottom right uh, is a plant of a typical Fritillaria armina. And you can see how the intermediates uh, can integrate uh, between the four, uh, between, between the two species. Uh, so uh, an interesting uh, hybridization, which is a very rare event in Fritillaries because uh, most of them are fairly separated by either geography or uh, habitat preference. But these two just happen to grow together um, and, uh, and and they can hybridize. Um, up there, we find lots of other flowers. There's a lovely Corydalis oppositifolia, uh, Crocus biflorus, uh, Tulipa armina, and this wonderful Pedicularis, uh, which is not a bulb at all, uh, all colonizing uh, this sort of stony habitat. Well, um, you can see the habitat is very, very wet down here, and uh, this is where we were finding Fritillaria armina and Fritillaria olbriana. But you can see that the group has gone up onto the summit of this sort of gravelly hill, um, and uh, they're bending down. They've obviously found something, um, and what they've found is another fritillary. And this is Fritillaria latifolia. Latifolia, broad-leaved. Um, it is a broad bell shape, um, so it's very, very square. Uh, it is has a, a the bell is is large. It's about two point five to three centimeters uh, long and about two centimeters wide. Dark brown um, with these very square uh, uh, shoulders where the nectary is is housed. It's obviously pollinated by quite large insects, uh, and it's a very short form growing up here uh, on the on the, the top of this uh, stony uh, ridge or stony summit. Uh, and there's quite a few of them up there. Um, and I think it's a lovely species. And, and the, the bell is so big and the stem is so short, it almost rests on the ground. So that's Fritillaria latifolia. So uh, that's a, so just a little snapshot of a five frit mountain for you. So we have uh, Fritillaria pinardii, Fritillaria armina, Fritillaria crassifolia subspecies crassifolia, Fritillaria olbriana in the middle, and Fritillaria latifolia. So that's um, uh, a five foot mountain, uh, uh, and I think a very good illustration of, of how they uh, uh, how they grow together, but in different habitats. <laughs>